tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou, ko Darren Ball, toko ingawa. Welcome, welcome to hour 14 of the Global ADHD Conference. The first in the world, we're up to hour 14. If you've joined us since 1am New Zealand time, you only have 10 hours to go, I believe in you. Um, this is a fantastic session because we're going to talk about coaching and counselling and how it works. Now, keeping with the theme of global uh, conferences, we have Anna um, on down on the bottom, and she's in the United States. Um, Alex, who is in the UK, where it's, I believe, 3 a.m., and he hasn't had much sleep due to a sick daughter. And behind the scenes, our producer is in London, and I'm in Auckland, New Zealand. So thank you so much, both of you, for uh, coming along. Before we introduce uh, this uh, little segment, there's a little disclaimer. The views, information, or opinions expressed during this panel discussion are solely those of the individual involved. They're not intended to represent the views of ADHD New Zealand as employees and volunteers. We're not ADHD New Zealand is not responsible and does not verify the accuracy of any of the information discussed. The primary purpose of this panel discussion with these esteemed people is to educate, inform, and understand coaching and counseling. It does not constitute medical advice or professional advice. And we also ask, because this has happened a couple of times, that you don't ask any personal questions about yourself or a loved one that might be able to identify you. Um, we won't ask them, but um, might save you some uh, hassle there. So before we start, I think this is a really good opportunity uh, for our fantastic uh, panelists to introduce themselves. And I'll start with you, Anna. Um, Anna, who are you? And you're on mute. I'll start with this in Māori, or, or, um, but please bear with me. Uh, it's my um, my Māori is not so good since I've been in the States for six years. So. Ko e te roa, te kainga, kai siero, o e noho ana. He ringa toho, kai, ara, kai arahi o i beehive health. Ko ana regrave o. So what I've just said is my name, oh sorry, is my New Zealand is my home. I live in Seattle. I'm a director and a counsellor, in brackets, a coach at beehive health, a New Zealand company. But I also work privately in the States or in Seattle, in the Seattle area. And my name is Anna Redgrave. And before I go any further, I just want to throw something in here, give you a little bit of more of a break, Alex. I might add a couple of things. <laughs> First of all, for all the Americans who end up watching this, I'd like to add that New Zealanders often call ourselves Kiwis. And you might have heard it through the last section. Now, we're not named after a hairy fruit. That's green in the middle. <laughs> but a flightless bird. And it's absolutely polite. And in fact, it'll... It, earn your brownie points if you call us a Kiwi. And Kiwis, when you're in the US, don't call you, just call yourself a New Zealander. Otherwise, many Americans will just think you're calling yourself a hairy fruit. <laughs> <laughs> I'd also, sometimes I think, I've been watching this, we all need a bit of a laugh, right? And I like to laugh. I'd also like to share that I have an interesting and curious mind. I'm, I segue a lot, which if you hear any of my meetings, <laughs> happens a lot. I'm prone to interruption. Sorry, haven't quite worked through that properly with my ADHD. Oh, and I'm a living embodiment of an adult woman with combined type ADHD. But like everyone, I'm unique and an individual in my way. I'm not defined by ADHD. It just adds to my mix. I also have brown hair. I have funny toes, true. I have one heck of a sense of humor. I'm a painfully slow reader and I love to listen and chat. I've experienced real personal and vocational struggles in my life, as well as some incredible successes. I love the out outdoors, mountain biking and hiking, um, including, uh, by the way, uh, sorry, mountain biking and hiking, which I meant to say, by the way, is actually known as tramping in New Zealand. Bend your minds around that world. <laughs> Over to you, Darren. <laughs> Thank you, Anna. Thank you very much. Um, Alex, you can do this, mate. How are you? Okay, bear with me. I'm going to try a bit of Maori. 
Tanakoto, 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 Kata. Kia ora. I'm Alex. I am tuning in from London uh, to be with you guys today. A bit about me. Um, so I am a ADHD coach and I'm also a registered BACP, which is the British Association of Counselors and Psychotherapists. Um, therapist. um, I'm a mental health first aid instructor for MHFA England, hoping to also be uh, in Aotearoa um, next year. Uh, I credit myself there. Um, and I work with mainly adults late in diagnosis who um, within uh, therapy or coaching and um, a little bit more about me uh, another cool fact I was one of the first 40 people to be diagnosed with ADHD back in the UK in 1990 I was four years old so I'll let you figure out how old I am from that um, so yeah and um, I have a two-year-old daughter um, who is currently upstairs um, not feeling well um, and I moved to New Zealand uh, I land in New Zealand on the 1st of January 2023 so I'll be with you guys in the not too distant future very excited to be working over there so that's me and it is 3 a.m and my executive functioning is not online <laughs> and I'm not <laughs> medicated <laughs> so, hey, well this should this will be fun of anything Alex um, and for those who haven't been here in the last four hours, my name's Darren. I'm the chair of ADHD New Zealand. I have two ADHD children um, and have enjoyed all the strengths and all the frustrations and have been fighting the health and education systems in Aotearoa in New Zealand for quite some time. So what we have here are three people who understand the community and I would hate for you to miss out on the opportunity to ask some questions. So global8dhd.com is your access site. You'll be able to ask questions. And while you're there, donate some money. And ADHD New Zealand is using that donation to help drive uh, the work we're doing in their primary and secondary schools in New Zealand. So Anna, I'm going to ask this question first of you, uh, because it's really simple, isn't it? What is coaching? <laughs> yep so I kind of had to look it up a little bit just so I could uh, sort of explain <laughs> it because <laughs> my executive functioning was going eh, what is coaching so first of all I want to explain that um, like Alex I am actually a trained counsellor um, but I I work with coaching as well as counselling in my practice um, so I intertwine them both but if we're looking at pure coaching I personally see it as steps towards moving forward um, it's more present and future oriented and it's people, it's helping people achieve specific goals. Coaching, uh, counseling can be as well. Generally, I suspect for shorter periods of time, um, it might be a little bit more directive, but there's a big crossover of coaching um, as it can feel therapeutic and have accounts and be counseling generative. So that's my perspective. And Alex, what's coaching uh, in your view? Uh, I have a little analogy because I like an analogy, um, which is, you know, your, your, your car has broken down and the therapist kind of helps you figure out by looking back, like, why did it break down? Like, what happened before the breakdown, yeah. you know, yeah. to figure out, whereas the coach is going, all right, so you've broken down, you've now figured out there's some things you need to do to move forward. So I'm going to help get this car back on the road. And um, we're going to look at mm. what's going to get in the way of that and how we're going to get there. So like with Anna said, it's a bit more future focused. But I want to caveat, and that, Anna's already alluded to this, the professions cross over a lot. And mm. both Anna and I are in a position where we're definitely straddling these two hats. Um, and depending on who you speak to, you will get different answers. But I think there is a general sense that in coaching, you don't tend to look back. You tend to think about how are we going to progress forwards? Um, and that isn't always the focus for therapy. 
And the other thing I would say is, if you're a therapist, then you're a mental health practitioner. Uh, and so therefore, you're often working with mental health issues. Whereas mm. I think with coaching, you're not a mental health practitioner, right? And I think there's a mm. different, there is an import, there is important differentiator here about, about mental health concerns, conditions, however, because depending on the country that you're in, there are different legalities around that and different jurisdictions. So um, if someone is acutely mm. suicidal, then a therapist is someone placed to support that person. A coach is not. Mm. Um, that isn't within any of the coaching training that I'm aware of. And most coaching training that I have done has taken quite a hard line on when it comes to things like, you know, um, uh, things like suicide. That, that mm. is the remit of, of someone within a clinical medical profession. Mm. And uh, I see you nodding vigorously. You're obviously in agreement. Absolutely. Absolutely. Mm. Um, uh, I, um, sorry, um, counselling, I really feel helps, can really help people to look at, um, often say with coaching, people might get stuck and that kind of thing. Um, and I think counselling can be there as well. I know coaching can help with this as well to help you sort of work out why you're stuck and help you move forward. But yes, from counselling very much, we trained, I'm trained and we, we um, in America and in New Zealand, um, I have to keep up my um, understanding of, uh, of pure, of mental health. Um, mm -hmm. Both of my registrations are included with it. I suspect Alex would be as well. Um, and uh, there's a, there is an ongoing, um, especially in the States, an understanding of suicide and changes and things like that that happen with it. So yeah, there's a real focus on mental health with counselling. Nicely put, Alex, and wish I'd come up with that myself. Mm. <laughs> yeah, there's a nice description. Um, so I'm going to show my ignorance a little bit here. What happens if you're coaching a client and it starts to drift to um, a mental health issue? Because uh, there'll be those who are coaches watching this who, or who want to be coaches, and they might want to think about something. How do you deal with that? And Anna, we'll start with you this time. Um, it's a difficult question for me to answer personally because I am a counsellor. I'm a trained counsellor and I know that Alex is as well. However, if you were a coach, um, I would, uh, or anyone who's in um, this position or in that position, um, all countries, um, all countries that are involved with this that I know, um, sorry, Britain, New Zealand and America um, have first of all online services um yeah phone call services online services um but you can seek out and speak to professionals and ask what to do but um suicidality and that kind of thing really needs to be um taken care of you cannot yeah. fix somebody you cannot save somebody um mm. and it is it is up to a professional to um it, 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 and it's not your responsibility to take that on board. It's give yep. it to a professional and they can manage that sort of thing. Um, so yeah, yep. if you get into a difficult position, the problem is, is that professionals are really hard to come by at the moment. But I can't see that you'd yep. be able to re you'd be able to reach out to multiple people and say, look, I've got a client who's experiencing this difficulty. Can you help me out? Or get onto the online yep. service and that sort of thing. Pass them on to yep. um, have a look online. Yeah which I think is a good segue into the next question about what isn't coaching. So we know that um, it's not uh, past focus. We know it's not a psychologist or psychiatrist. What else isn't it? And this is really to help people to know what to expect. Alex, I'll, I'll throw that your way. Uh, sorry, I'm having some real problems with my Wi-Fi internet here. Can you guys hear me okay? Yeah, we can. Yeah. Great. Um, Darren, can you just ask the question again? Because you cut off halfway through the question. Um, I was just asking what isn't coaching. So we, we know it's not looking backwards. We know it's not a psychologist or a psychiatrist. Is that about covers it or is it something else that it's not? Uh, what isn't coaching? Yeah, coaching is not about tips and tricks. Yeah. I think that a lot of people look at 
ADHD coaches in particular as being sort of the font of all knowledge and we just share our golden wisdom and <laughs> they'll be they'll be fine you know um, and that's not that I know sorry spoiler alert um, <laughs> but that that is not the case and actually and this is the thing right about ADHD we have these uh i call them fast brains it doesn't necessarily mean that we can like think faster but that we can think differently and that often means yeah. that we're frustrated we're frustrated and so we want like we want quick fixes and quick answers and we want to kind of get on and that's great but also we need to slow down and we need to take some time over things and mm. you know for a lot of clients that i've worked with it's they're kind of surprised at the frustration sometimes that comes up when they start with a coach because it's this process that they're going through um mm. in understanding i would say a lot of coaching is a lot about understanding who they are you mm. know as opposed mm. to just i'm coming to you so i can get organized you know <laughs> um it's it's like this thing where i'm like i'm not here to try and make you neurotypical that's not my job yeah my hair is yeah. to help impact my hair is job here is to help empower you to be the best yeah. that you can be as an ADHD. -er. Yeah. You know? Um, um so that was a very long yeah. answer. <laughs> no, I, I, I'm laughing. Go sorry, Anna. I want to just add, and I just to extend from that, and you just said the word empowerment. Um, our job, even as a counselor, is not to fix you um or to do the work for you, right? Um, our job, um, all that approach. Uh, is controlling and it disempowers people. It takes away people's power. Our job is to empower people to give you agency. And we only see you maybe for one hour, half an hour or one yep. hour a week or every two weeks. And that's not a lot of time. Yep. Every person who comes to see someone has to go away for the rest. I was going to try and count, calculate 24 times seven, but my yep. brain's not yep. that fast today. Um, and <laughs> you've... Everyone has to go away and do the work. But Alex also touched on something that I absolutely believe. We want the answers now. Even I still do. But it really, yeah. I really believe in focusing on small changes, one thing at a time, and really yes. putting that time and focus in there to really growing. Pop up. Good That's outcomes. That's right. Yeah. And Alex, I wasn't laughing at what you're saying. I was, I was laughing at a friend in New Zealand who has ADHD and he thought he saw a coach and one of his issues is disorganization and effectively he left with Outlook and a template for Outlook. And so I asked him after three weeks when he came and saw me to, as a friend, not anything else, so how's it working out? And he goes, now I'm just disorganized with Outlook. But that's <laughs> <laughs> and if anything, Outlook may have made it worse because um, he now had to allow time to use Outlook. And, um, you know, Outlook's a good tool. Don't get me wrong. It's more the point that he went expecting a tip and a trick and got Outlook. Um, and I'm sure it could work yeah. for some people, but that's not the essence of coaching. Yeah, uh, there was something that uh, a, a coach said to me a while ago, which I thought was quite helpful, is quite often... In, in therapy, you often do it weekly, and there's a lot of work that happens within the therapy session. And coaching yeah. often isn't as long as a therapy session. It can be. But I yeah. know a lot of ADHD coaches who do like 25-minute sessions because you can coach someone in 25 minutes. Like, it's amazing how yeah. much work you can do. But quite often, the work with coaching happens in between the sessions. Ah. You know, right? Whereas a lot of the work in therapies happening in the session and that has an impact on your life outside of the session right um i yeah. often when i'm working with clients we i kind of we talk about setting mini experiments that yeah. they can go and and, and and trial and see how that works yeah. or doesn't work and then we can yeah. we can wrestle with it and play with it in coaching you know and um because they're the ones discovering what works for them. I'm just mm -hmm. someone who is informed as an ADHD -er about how the brain works and how the ADHD right. mind works in yep. order to be someone that is empathic and supportive and affirming in terms of yep. helping facilitate that, that process that yep. they're undertaking. Yeah, a good description. And I wonder 
if my friend's experience perhaps speaks to the immaturity of coaching for ADHD and coaching full stop in New Zealand. Um, because when you talk a multimodal approach to ADHD, you know, it starts with prescriptions and it might end with eating the right foods and exercising, but coaching's really there. And Anna, you know New Zealand well. well how would you describe uh, the New Zealand approach to coaching? Ooh, that question is, um, how would I... Ooh. How would I describe the New Zealand approach to counselling? I kind of have thought about this question before, but more in the more from a New Zealand versus US perspective. First yeah. of all, the US has this massive diverse population, 330 million yeah. people. So you're going to have more people to get services from. Plus, yeah. here in the States, everyone, there's some really negative ideas about ADHD in the States. Um, mm -hmm. And there's some really negative ideas about Americans and the way they function. It's very generalized and that's and a lot of it's yeah. very incorrect. Um, it isn't easy to go and it's to go and get medication. There is a real process to go through it depending on what state you're in and that kind of thing. But um, when you talk about coaching in New Zealand versus the states, the reason I talk about the states is because there's a lot less stigma here about ADHD. Yeah. Um, there's a lot less stigma about getting self-help. Um, getting counseling and getting coaching and over here you do need health insurance so one of the negatives is that you can't really survive without it but you but but often health insurance covers counseling and coaching here in the states to some degree yes so it's it's seen as a health concern um yep. whereas a lot of new zealanders have to pay for it out of pocket uh and you're lucky if your insurance company covers it um, there's no pre-existing conditions allowed here in the States, so they can't take that away. So, this, so there's a lot less stigma around getting support and there's a lot less stigma around ADHD. So I have a lot of people in these States when I don't, I don't like people know I've got brown hair and I kind of, I don't go and tell people or not tell people that I've got ADHD. If it comes up, it comes up. Right. Um, but, uh, I have a lot of adults, you know, bounce around and they're like, hey, yeah, I've got ADHD. You know, yeah. I had my 60, I think my 60 year old landlord pop up one day and he's like, yeah, I've got ADHD. And I've had lots more people just <laughs> share it with me because yeah. there's been this longer term healthcare thing. Um, there's been the, this acceptance of um, getting mental health and um, and just extra support to, to live and reach your goals because yeah. there's this many more people, then there's a lot then there's been um, a lot greater emphasis on getting on, on people training to get support. So in, yep. that, in, in this instance, the States is ahead um, yep. on what we are doing in New Zealand, but I'm starting to see a real fervor in New Zealand from people wanting to get experience. And the problem is how do we do it? You know, and, and I know yep. how do we get decent coaching? The other thing is here in the States in order for healthcare companies to pay for it, you have to be registered. You, and that means mm, there's, a, mm. there's a training process and there's an ongoing registration process with it, um, an ongoing mm. um, certification process with it. Whereas in New Zealand, um, at the moment, anyone can call themselves a coach or a counsellor um, and and not have had a lot of um, extra training in there. So, um, mm. so that's something I'd always say is really look at people's... Um, at their credentials to see what they've trained in. And when you go to see a coach, ask about it. Um, but yeah, there's some of the, I've got lots more different things about mm. what's um, about coaching in New Zealand, but I, I think that yep. it's just in its infancy and there's a lot more work to yeah. be done. And, and Anna, um, before I ask you the same question, Anna, it's about the UK. There's, it feels like there's hardly any coaches in New Zealand. Mm -hmm. oh, would there's you agree? Not. Yep. Yeah. Um, and just to do a plug for your business, this is one of the reasons you set up Beehive, isn't it? Yes. So um, uh, I, I sort of had an online or a telehealth idea in my head for a few years and then COVID happened and there were some other companies doing that sort of thing. And I just sort of, I should explain, um, I've lived in San Francisco and now I live here. I'm surrounded by yep. tech, T-E-C-H, yep. T-I-C-K, but tech um, engineers. <laughs> Our, our New Zealand accent yeah. comes across quite interesting. 
Um, and I and I and I knew that different things could be done, or we could think about the world and mental health, or not health, but support differently. So yeah, I um, wanted to, and I was getting so many inquiries for people wanting support with ADHD that it was starting to be to be painful to open each yeah. email and to look at it. Yeah. So I went, yeah. all right, what can I do? I'll set up a I'll set up a um, an online telehealth service so we can reach um, people throughout New Zealand and offer them a variety of services based on what they want and what they need and let them yep. lead and understand what's right for them. So um, it's in its infancy. Um, we are trying to grow and uh, and that's yeah, that's where the business is sort of aimed, I think. I don't know if I covered yeah. it all. But. Thank you. I think you have. Um, and I think one of the mindset changes New Zealanders um, need to get through is the psychologists and psychiatrists are important. Um, let's ignore the fact that they're, they're largely inaccessible on a quick basis in New Zealand. They are important, but a coach can offer different things, and this is going to change some of your mindset. Now, before we go on, uh, ladies and gentlemen out there in YouTube, we are aware that there has been a technical hitch um, and that you may have missed some of our introduction. So uh, what we have here is Anna Redgrave. Uh, she's a coach and a counsellor based in Seattle. Um, <laughs> she uh, also runs uh, beehive.health, which uh, is available in New Zealand. And um, down below um, on screen, but not in real life, is Alex, who's also uh, a coach and also right now at um, 3 a.m. in London. Um, and Anna, it must be about 9.30, 8.30 in Seattle as well. 7.30. 7.30. Oh, that's why we can never talk. Um, what we have spent the last um, 20 minutes talking about is exactly what is coaching. This video will be available um, after the conference if you want to see the front part, but we will keep going. Um, so sorry for the technical issues. Um, and also globaladhd.com is where you can go to donate some money and ask any questions. And we want to see those questions come through. I have to admit, as is often the case in conferences, uh, 10 mm -hmm. minutes to go, that's when we got all the questions. So right now there is one question that's just come through. So let's send it, let's send it through. Um, now, Alex, Oh, and poor Alex is not only up at 3 a.m. in the morning, he has also been dealing with a sick daughter. So we really appreciate you being here. Um, and um, I feel a little guilty as well. Um, uh, but the question I have for you is I'm really interested in understanding what coaching looks like in the UK, because also you seem quite advanced when you say compared to New Zealand. Um, so there is... Uh... There is a real diversity of coaching in the UK. I mean, there's a there's a lot of us. You know, there were 65 million um, people, and ADHD coaching is a growing profession. I'd say in the UK, um, it falls under the category of life coaching, a form like a subcategory of life coaching, um, and so. Uh, there are a few academies that provide ADHD specific coaching training that's accredited by the ICF, that's the International Coaching Federation. It's kind of like the main global governing body for the coaching profession. And it was the first governing body to really establish coaching as a kind of profession in its own right, as separate to counseling therapy. Um, so, but all of the training academies are based in North America. Um, mm. And so, um, and it's online training. Um, it's great training, um, but it's limited. Um, and so you have to bear in mind that um, when people say they're an ADHD coach, technically coaching um, isn't a protected category, even though we have like a, the ICF, mm -hmm. technically anybody could. So just harking back to what Anna said, um, when I say to people that they're looking for an ADHD coach, I feel like when you're going to a coach, you're also going because you're looking at that person in particular. Yeah. Like yeah. they have a whole life experience. Like, is it, is this yeah. an ADHD coach who's, uh, 
been in middle management their whole life or have they been in C-suite or have they, maybe they're a working mum, you know, yeah. like um, I think that so often the experience that that coach has in life as a fellow ADHD, because let's face it, mm. almost every ADHD coach has ADHD themselves. Um, yeah. I, I don't know any coaches who call themselves ADHD coaches who don't have ADHD. And that's a really important part of this, that you get to be with someone who understands, who's living it. Yeah. yeah. Um, so I'd say uh, the UK yeah, yeah. is it's fairly advanced in that respect. Yeah. Um, but it's still growing. You know, I think mm. still people are, I think people are still trying to get their head around mm. like what's the difference between say ADHD coaching and leadership coaching. I think it's still one of these things that it's not, it's not clearly defined. Yeah, I agree. Anna, you're nodding. Yep, I, I nod. Um, I'm trying really hard not to interrupt. So I, um, <laughs> my speciality. You're doing good. You're doing good. I'm so excited. I just want to input stuff. Um, two things that I wanted to add. First of all, in not just in coaching, but also in counseling, um, even in um, clinical psychology and in psychiatry, there is actually, in most of the medical and helping professions, there's actually very little training with ADHD. So a lot of it is, um, is, is yeah. people working it out as they go. Um, I have, I, it's really interesting to do this with ADHD UK. They don't know, but I have actually done some of their trainings in the past with um, uh, some of the online trainings that I participated in during COVID just to find out extra information, you know, just seeking out bits and pieces. So, so that is one of the yeah. things. Um, I think someone who has a really good coaching approach is, um, or a counselling approach is really important, but also, as Alex said, that life experience. But I also wanted to add this about when you find, when you seek out a coach or a counsellor or anyone, really, anyone, and that is find someone you can work with. You don't have to like them, but it's someone who doesn't bring out the shame in someone with ADHD. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, yeah. if I can get to one of the root words, root causes of problems that I feel, you know, right underneath all of it is shame. And yeah. It's, it's it's good to have someone who might challenge you or push you a little bit, but but people can do that without bringing out the shame. So yeah. it's really important that they clearly understand your goals and tailor their work to you rather than you fitting into their mold. That's what I think. That's my personal perspective. Yeah. Mm. And expect to work. You know, expect to mm. put in the work. Um, there is work in between. But the mm. main thing is um, shop around. You know, if you can, if you have the option to shop around, um, do it and speak to different people. Now mm -hmm. here in the US, I get interviewed by my clients. Um, and I'd like to say that most of them pick me as their employer, but, or as their, not their employer, but as their counselor or coach. So, you know, gay for me. Um, but <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but yeah. Um, talk to different people and, and, and yeah. really, yeah, get away from that shame thing. And that's anywhere. New Zealand, mm. the US, the mm. UK, South Africa, anywhere, Australia. Um, nicely said. And you have a phrase that has stuck with me ever since we've started talking, Anna, is that we see you. All right. Do you want to explain what that means? Um, we see you. I think um, a real goal for my for the business, Beehive, it's by Beehive with a Y, by the way, but um, is we meet you where you're. We meet you where you're at, and yeah. that's really important because some people say, "Don't tell me." I actually met Darren eight or nine years ago, and when I first met him, he got up and he told me what what ADHD NZ does, and that say said. And Darren, I hope that it's okay for me to say this, but oh, Darren totally. said we're here to support people who suffer from ADHD, and I nearly walked out of the room, and I yeah. said, "Don't you tell me I suffer." Let me make decisions about what's going on for me. Now, yep. that means some people are, have, are owning it, getting on with it. Um, whatever processes I've worked through, they may have had bad things happen in their life or not. Some people are owning mm. it. Some people are just stuck. You know, they're sort of in the middle and they're, they're sort of halfway there. Their life is just sort of you know, with ADHD, it's just sort of puddling along and then these mistakes keep happening, yeah. a divorce or a, they lose their job and they keep functioning just 
And there's other people who are really struggling, really, really struggling with ADHD, really, or and and the the coexisting other things that go on with it. Um, mm. You know, there's drug and alcohol issues. There's um, mm. there's arguing. There's all sorts of you know really upsetting things that really happen in people's lives. Uh, and mm. I really believe that a coach or a counsellor or whoever you, a clinical psychologist, whoever you work with, can meet you where you're at and make you mm. feel held and can mm. help you work towards your goals at a pace mm. that works for you. Maybe not the pace you want it to be, but the pace that works for you. Yeah. <laughs> Taking it back to right. that change happens in small bits. Yeah. Nicely said. And look, um, I've had a question which I can answer is where can you get in contact with coaches in New Zealand? So ADHD.org.nz on its website, it does have uh, some coaches, including Beehive. Um, and we're very careful who we put up there uh, for two reasons. Just because you have ADHD, uh, some people think if they have ADHD, they could be a coach. We do believe that there is some training and we also seek, uh, look to see if it's the sort of person um, who, you know, can connect with people with ADHD as well. Um, picking up on other comments, it is a, a market that is in its infancy in New Zealand and it needs to grow. So you won't find many people there, unfortunately. Um, Alex, um, oh. going back to you, because I saw you nodding. Oh, sorry, Anna. No, Alex had a question. <laughs> I was, I was, uh, yeah. I was, I was gonna, I was gonna do an an exclusive. So, um, just about to launch an ICF accredited um, ADHD foundation training for coaches Good. and therapists, which we're doing a pilot start this month, and then we will launch it in February, which will be run from New Zealand and the UK for coaches and therapists. Um, so, we're. We're starting something that is really needed um more training really um effective yeah. training but uh, our training is from the perspective of the lived experience in combination with the neuroscience with the neuroscience yeah. so um anyway just to say um yeah and, and I, that's for anyone and i want to say that about a lot of the adhd training that i've heard it's very dsm focused it's this is what adhd this is this this is this this is this um but it doesn't include all the other stuff that goes on with ADHD that's outside the DSM, does it, Alex? Exactly. And in fact, that's one of the things that we talk a lot about in our course. And it still amazes me because of all the research that we know about ADHD. Emotional dysregulation um, mm. is, a, is a real key element to ADHD. And this is something that isn't part of the diagnostics um, for ADHD. And yet it is a universal experience of every ADHD that I've ever met. Um, so, yeah. yeah. Um, Alex, just can, if you wouldn't mind continuing to do the plug for the course, because that's a giant step forward. Uh, it's just been selfish here in New Zealand, that is a giant step forward. Um, tell me what other sort of things you cover. Yeah, so um, it's been interesting because it's a co-created course with another amazing ADHD coach who comes from an education background. She's a, yeah. um, she's a much more advanced coach than I am, a brilliant coach um, um, uh, called Katie Friedman. And um, mm. uh, the course is eight weeks um, and it's 20 hours, accredited hours of training. And um, we follow Dr. Thomas Brown, who is one of the key kind of figureheads in the world of ADHD in terms of research. Um, and he created a model of executive functions, the, which is the part of this part of our brain, like the, the brain's management mm. system. Mm. That is, this is the part of what we know from, from neuroscience that we really struggle with, with our executive functioning, our ability to manage mm. um, tasks. And so we take his model and we use that as a structure on which to understand and discuss um, all of the paradoxes of ADHD. We understand there's a concept called situational variability um, which is this idea that, you know, there can be different situations and different, um, we can be brilliant in certain environments mm. and we can really struggle in other environments and yet it might be a similar task. Um, yeah. and so this is where, um, there's a lot of shame and stigma 
that comes in with ADHD um, because there's things that don't make sense unless you have this what we call the ADHD lens where yeah. you start to see ADHD in a new light and so the course is helping people to understand this because a lot of what people know about ADHD is from the media or from yeah. hearsay it's about yeah. badly behaved boys which is amazing that people still <laughs> hold this view because it's so archaic it's so early 90s yeah. um and yet people still do you know um yeah and so this is really helping people understand this from a lived experience perspective um yeah fantastic and how will people find the course to enroll um uh uh, that's a really good question because the pilot is just about to begin with, with um, 10 um, delegates who are very kind okay. enough at the time to help us. Um, so what I would say is we'll, it'll, you'll be able to access it probably via the ADHD um, uh, UK and NZ websites. Um, they'll probably they'll be, be on there. So um, I'd say watch the space. Um, but we'll be launching in February. Um, and clearly you have some interest because how much is the course? Or, or should we wait to you? Uh, um, oh, the, the price. I, I, we yeah. actually, we're still just trying to make sure that the course is cohesive and makes sense. Yeah. Um, because it's two ADHDs trying to create a course. And we, <laughs> uh, as you may have learned from this discussion between Anna and I, there is so much to talk about. <laughs> and, we have, and we have so much interest <laughs> in this topic that, um, yeah. so uh, we're in the final stages of getting it accredited by the ICF. Um, so, yeah. Um, yeah, but I'd say watch this space and check out the websites. Yeah. And for those in New Zealand, watch the ADHD New Zealand website and in the and also ADHD UK website as well. So um congratulations on doing that. Clearly sorely needed. Um mm. hey, I want to just move into this the role of coaching as a multimodal uh delivery because um it, to be fair, it does seem the UK and the US is more advanced than New Zealand. You know, to me, um, as a parent and someone who works with ADHD in New Zealand, it's very much see a specialist, get some medication, then there's a gap, and then you might look at more exercise or the what you eat. So coaching can play a role in that uh, approach and sort of that multimodal delivery. And and I'm going to head to you first and see and sort of hear about how it could fit into everything else. Um, well, I kind of, uh, I've had conversations with other people in the, um, in this arena in New Zealand, um, and have thought a bit about this, but, uh, I think it's somewhere in the credits for this group, but if one in 20 members of the population has ADHD in mm. diagnosing and managing this diversity should be more broadly available and mm. understood by those in the helping professions at the moment, psychiatry, yep. Even in um, in the in in Britain, just getting an appointment to get an assessment to get meds, just is impossible. I believe it's three years in the in in, in the UK. Yeah, if you go by the NHS traditional route, it's anything up to like three to four years at yep. the moment. And in New right, Zealand, I'll stop um, complaining. <laughs> in yeah, New six Zealand, to nine months. What in New Zealand? What was the DHBs? Only one or two of them actually did anything about it, and the rest of them brutally um, weren't able to work with people with ADHD. So, um, but a multimodal process, the problem is so much focus is, or focus, haha, -ha, medications <laughs> is put on medications to fix ADHD and they do not fix ADHD. They absolutely help and they may improve focus. Um, and it can, and medications um, can really support people to implement change into their life, but it's not a magic pill. Um, as we grow up through life, we learn habits, you know, um, we might use eating um, for stimming, or we might use it for masking, or we might use it um, to keep ourselves busy and get that dopamine going. But mm, we also mm. learn then to eat, you know, we can train our bodies very quickly when to sleep and when not to sleep, when to eat, when not to eat, um, anger, all sorts of things. So I think that medication can be helpful towards learning habits, but I think we, um, all people, not just people with ADHD, can learn new habits um, and coaching and counselling can help with that sort of thing. Coaching can, you know, really help with habits. A multimodal approach. Um, we also learn quickly that we don't 
that as ADHD is we don't fit into the world's expectations of what normal is. And to tell you the truth, yeah. as I work with clients across the board, I don't think there is a normal. Um, I think there's, um, I think everyone has their diverse, diverse way of being, whether they have a diverse brain or not. Um, but as we as we develop with um, within this world of expectations, we also develop behaviours that mask our tendencies. Um, it's rude to interrupt. Um, but when I interrupt, it's actually me getting excited and being a part of the conversation. <laughs> I want to share with you what's exciting. Yeah. I don't I don't want to talk over you. I'm I'm excited. Um, uh, and my 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 the dopamine's going for me. Those kind of things. Um, so. But as what happens is we get shamed into being, mm. this is how you should act. This is what you should do. Um, and we realize we're not quite right. So over this period, we learn um, negative or we learn behaviors that internally can really be very negative. So mm. a multimodal approach, medication won't take those habits, won't take those lifelong learnings away. But a multimodal mm. approach using different resources, coaching, counseling, um, and other sources or therapies um, can help people get on and mm. maybe learn to accept themselves. And I want to, um, it can help us learn our strengths and our weaknesses. Everybody has them. Mm. Um, mm. To be kind to ourselves, to understand how to function in this world. And I want to point this out. Um, Hallowell in, in ADHD 2.0 says the flip side of distractibility is curiosity. The flip side of impulsivity, impulsivity is creativity. And the flip side of hyperactivity is energy. Now, I have the most amazing and lucky experience to work with some of the some tech engineers here in Seattle. Um, some of them, one of them, an ADHD, -er, brilliant. If any doctor tells you that you can't go to university, or if you went to university, you can't have ADHD, this person was involved, highly involved with putting the Mars rover. On, um, mm. on wherever it went, on, on Mars. <laughs> Another person works for one of the big gaming companies, Fortnite, um, not Fortnite, but was involved in development of that game. They've moved companies, they, um, they are hiring people. They, both these people have ADHD, they're hiring other ADHDers, mm. and they know what those ADHDers' strengths and weaknesses are, and they know mm. how to support them and in fact, mm. they know that they might be able to start things, but can't finish it. And mm. I don't know if many people are aware of this, and I've read about it, but there are employment agencies specifically looking for us, yep. looking yep. for our interesting and curious minds. I've been in so much trouble for my mind, but recently someone or some people have come into my life who appreciate it, and it has made a big difference to how I feel about myself. And learn me and yeah, help me learn yeah. realize that actually mm. it's a really cool mind. You just have to just has to have the right people to harness it or to for me to harness it and work with them. Yeah. M nicely said, Anna. And in fact, I'm going to do a plug for our next session. If you want to understand how neurodiversity in the workplace works and what happens when workplaces accept ADHD, join us in our next session of Google. It, it is amazing. Um, look, we're running out of time, so I'm going to ask both of you one final question. Or, um, and I'll start with you, Alex. Um, and the question is, do you love coaching and why? You say, do I love coaching? Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I tell you why I love coaching. It is this amazing opportunity for two ADHDers to connect on a very personal level. And yep. there's a high, what I call profound empathy that happens, and it's transformational. And I would say I love it because it is amazing to connect with other ADHDs. I learn from my clients, and it is amazing to see how they transform. And subsequently, I transform too. So that's why I love coaching. Um, it's, the, it's the best job. <laughs> And Anna, thank you, Alex. Oh, I don't think I could put it much better than Alex. No. Um, I've learned a lot. Um, I, it's it's cool that I get to be paid to hang out with my people. Um, and yeah. and even though I'm a counsellor, I get to feel 
typical or normal hanging out with my clients um and uh we're all on journeys so yeah I think it's it's just really exciting and I love yeah like Alex said hanging out with other ADHDers I love talking to people and um and listening and I think yeah we're very blessed and very lucky to be able to do something well I am to be able to do something I love and to tell you the truth yeah the difference between an old life where I worked in the corporate world and this life where I work as a coach and a counsellor I get to do what I love and I get to work with people that I really enjoy yeah yeah. I can see listening to both of you, uh, Anna late on a, I guess a Thursday night in the US and Alex uh, early, 3 a.m., ne nearly 4 a.m., how much you love us and the fact that you love ADHD, I can see it in that you love coaching and I can only think that uh, the, I guess the clients, the customers, if that's the right word, uh, patience doesn't feel like it's the right word would really um just create so much energy for you as well um yeah yeah so yeah. um and i also unfortunately i regret w running out of time because um uh, uh there's a few more questions i'll have come through but i did tell you people out there in youtube land to send them through quickly <laughs> um so uh alex and anna thank you so much thanks for uh streaming in uh, Alex, I hope you get some sleep before you <laughs> before you can if, you know if, in the next session. If, you, if you're still on, um, I'm on another panel at uh, nine a.m. UK time, so uh, yeah, I'm going to go to bed and then I'm going to get up again for that one. <laughs> Alex, take care, eh? <laughs> yeah, look after yourself, Alex. Um, yeah, I will do. And and for those out there uh, watching the conference, thank you for joining us for another exciting session of the world's first global ADHD 24 hour conference. Um, we really appreciate you coming. I uh, know there are technical issues at the start and this will be available shortly um, for you to be able to watch the first 20 minutes, which are just as good as the last 20 minutes. So uh, please check that out. Um, coming up is uh, an introduction to neurodiversity in Google and, and what they do. Um, I also want to just push a movie called The Disruptors, which is a movie that is everything Anna talked about. ADHD New Zealand has bought it to New Zealand. If it's in the movie theatre in Auckland uh, coming up, but it's also on YouTube and it's relatively cheap uh, to purchase. And it's on Apple um, and Amazon if you're not in New Zealand as well. So please take the opportunity to do that. I look forward to seeing you for our 15 in 10 minutes. Um, and until then, have a great day. And Alex, uh, go to go to bed, mate. Thank you, Anna. <laughs> Take care. Bye. Bye bye.